Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we will be picking up some important financial topics and we will be discussing them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up that can be helpful for you, you will be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group. The link is in the description below. The free PDFs of these sessions will be available on this group. So if you want the access to those free PDFs, you can join this very group. Now let's move on to question number one, which says identify the statements correctly related to regulatory sandbox framework of RBI. So in this very session, we'll be mainly focusing on the topic regulatory sandbox, what is it? What are its objectives? What benefit it's going to offer? And what's the latest update of RBI on this very framework? So three questions today will be related to this topic. And then we have another topic to be discussed. So please pay kind attention uh, in order to be able to answer the questions in a proper manner. So before answering this first question, let's first discuss the entire thing about regulatory sandbox. And then we'll come back over here. All right. So talking about regulatory sandbox, this very uh, framework was rolled out by RBI in 2019 on 13th of August 2019. So to encourage the innovations, RBI came out with this very framework. What is regulatory sandbox all about? It basically refers to live testing of new products or services in a controlled test regulatory environment for which the regulators may permit certain regulatory relaxations for limited purpose of testing. So whenever there is an entity who wants to come up with a new product, new service, new way of rendering the financial services, then those products and services, instead of being launched in a larger scale in the entire market, first a live testing of those products or services can be done in a controlled environment. If that product or service proves to be successful in that very testing environment, then you can commercialize it on a larger scale. This will make sure that whatever products or services are coming, they are good enough, they are viable and uh, will not easily fail when they come in the market. Agar aap pehle hi test kar lete ho naye products and services ko big market mein launch karne se pehle ek controlled environment mein, to aapko pata lag jata hai ki jab ye actually roll out hoga market mein, to ye successful hoga ki nahi, ye customer ko benefits dega ki nahi, ye ek viable option hai ki nahi. Isi liye pehle jo testing ki jati hai products and services ki ek controlled environment mein, jahan pe regulators, jaise ki RBI, kuch relaxations de deta hai aapko aur aap test karke pata laga sakte ho ki ye product कितना अच्छा है उस पूरे फ्रेमवर्क को हम कहते हैं रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स ओके सो आरबीआई इसके थ्रू आरबीआई विल बेसिकली कम अप विद अ सर्टेन विद सर्टेन थीम एंड देन यू कैन कम अप विद प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज रिलेटेड टू दैट थीम देन इट विल कंसीडर द एंटिटीज हु आर अप्लाइंग फॉर the live testing of products and services based on the necessary requirement it will basically select the companies whose products and services will be live tested and if that uh, testing proves to be successful that then that product can be commercialized on a larger scale okay so ek tarah se product ko big market mein launch karne se pehle hum uski testing kar lete hain taki hame pata lag jaye wo successful hoga ki nahi ye pura jo hai ye hota hai hamara regulatory sandbox framework ke under the RS, that is the regulatory sandbox, allows the regulator, innovator, financial service provider, customer to conduct field tests to collect evidence on the benefits and risks of new financial innovations while carefully monitoring and containing their risks. So, you do testing so that you products or services associated benefits, risks, you get an idea of the benefits and the risks associated with those financial innovations. ताकि अगर कोई भी प्रॉब्लम है तो वो मॉडिफाई कर दी जाए और तभी प्रोडक्ट लॉन्च किया जाए बेसिकली डिफरेंट रिस्क के साथ प्रोडक्ट को बेसिकली हमें न्यू मार्केट में लॉन्च नहीं करना चाहिए जो भी उसमें प्रॉब्लम्स हैं शॉर्टकमिंग्स हैं उन्हें ओवरकम करके फिर ही उन्हें लॉन्च करना चाहिए ताकि वो कस्टमर्स को लार्ज स्केल पे बेनिफिट कर पाए नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द वेरी ऑब्जेक्टिव इस कांसेप्ट से ही हमें ऑब्जेक्टिव क्लियर हो गया है but, but let's discuss it, it once again. The objective is to foster responsible innovation in financial services 
प्रमोट एफिशिएंसी एंड ब्रिंग बेनिफिट टू द कस्टमर्स जो भी हम नए प्रोडक्ट सर्विस के साथ आ रहे हैं उसमें शॉर्टकमिंग्स ना हो वो एक अच्छा वाइबल प्रोडक्ट हो एफिशिएंट इनफ हो कि वो कस्टमर्स को बेनिफिट दे पाए दी रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स एट इट्स कोर अ फॉर्मल रेगुलेटरी प्रोग्राम फॉर मार्केट पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू टेस्ट न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स और सर्विस और बिजनेस मॉडल्स विद कस्टमर्स इन अ लाइव इन्वायरमेंट सब्जेक्ट टू सर्टन सेफ गार्ड्स एंड ओवरसाइट असली इन्वायरमेंट के कंपेरिजन में हम कुछ सेफ गार्ड्स ओवरसाइट के साथ टेस्टिंग करते हैं कि जब ये प्रोडक्ट हमारे एक्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट में आएगा तो उसको क्या क्या डिफिकल्टीज फेस करनी पड़ेंगी क्या क्या आ, कैसे उसको रिस्पॉन्स मिलेगा तो एक तरह से पूरा लाइव इन्वायरमेंट क्रिएट होता है और उसमें ही टेस्टिंग की जाती है द प्रपोज फाइनेंशियल सर्विस टू बी लॉन्च शुड इंक्लूड अ न्यू और इमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजी और यूज ऑफ एग्जिस्टिंग टेक्नोलॉजी इन एन इनोवेटिव वे एंड शुड एड्रेस दी बेनिफिट प्रॉब्लम एंड प्रोवाइड बेनिफिट्स टू दी कंज्यूमर्स सो वट एवर दैट न्यू प्रोडक्ट और सर्विस इज विच इज टू बी टेस्टेड अंडर दिस वेरी फ्रेमवर्क इट शुड मेक यूज ऑफ इधर अ न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी और एन इमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजी और इट कैन मेक यूज ऑफ एग्जिस्टिंग टेक्नोलॉजी ओनली बट इन अ न्यू वे तो एग्जिस्टिंग टेक्नोलॉजी को और नए वे में कैसे यूज कर सकती हैं कंपनियां किसी भी फाइनेंशियल सर्विस या प्रोडक्ट को प्रोवाइड करने में या कोई न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी का कैसे यूज करके वो बेटर वे में प्रोवाइड कर सकती है सेम प्रोडक्ट और सर्विस उसको वही टाइप के जो प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज है वो ही यहाँ पे टेस्ट किए जाते हैं एंड वो उनका जो फोकस है वो होता है कस्टमर की प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करने में और उन्हें ज्यादा से ज्यादा बेनिफिट प्रोवाइड करना ईजिली फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज लो कॉस्ट पर प्रोवाइड करना What are the benefit it's going to offer? It will foster learning by doing. So before launching it on a larger scale, we test on the things. If there are some shortcomings, we overcome them. So by doing so, by so you are learning while carrying out the entire testing and improving before launching the product on a larger scale. Then the regulatory sandbox can test the product's viability without the need for a large and expensive rollout. If the product appears to have the potential success. Uh, potential to be successful. If there are any concerns, then modifications can be made. So, a product को आप large scale पे roll out कर दोगे, वो कितना expensive होगा अगर आपका वो product बाद में जाके fail कर जाता है. तो उसको large scale में launch करने से पहले एक testing कर लो ताकि कोई भी concerns हो तो वो modify किए जा सके और फिर उस product को broader market में हम launch कर देंगे. Fintechs provide solutions that can further financial inclusion in a significant way. So, through this regulatory sandbox, new platforms come up, and they help in promoting the concept of financial inclusion, which basically means making sure that financial products and services are available to the lowest possible sections of the society, also at a lower cost. So, new technology का use करके हम अच्छे financial products और services के साथ आएं, जो आप rural areas, backward areas लो सेक्शंस ऑफ द सोसाइटी उन तक उन तक उन सब लोगों तक की फाइनेंशियल जो रिक्वायरमेंट्स है सर्विसेज की उन्हें फुलफिल करे ये सारा ऑब्जेक्टिव है रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स का न्यू इनोवेशंस प्रमोट कर न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी और इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट्स प्रमोट करना जो फर्दर फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन इंश्योर करेंगे then the regulatory sandbox could lead to better outcomes for consumers as we have been discussing all about it by providing an increased range of products and services at reduced cost and improve the access to the financial services so ye kuch benefits hain is regulatory sandbox ke now moving ahead to the eligibility criteria kaun si aisi entities hain jo apne products ya services की लाइव टेस्टिंग करवा सकती हैं इस फ्रेमवर्क के अंदर विच एंटिटीज कैन गेट देयर प्रोडक्ट्स और सर्विसेज लाइव टेस्टेड अंडर दिस फ्रेमवर्क सो द टारगेट एप्लीकेंट्स फॉर द एंट्री टू रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स आर योर फिनटेक कंपनीज व्हिच कैन इंक्लूड डिफरेंट स्टार्टअप्स बैंक्स फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस लिमिटेड लायबिलिटी पार्टनरशिप पार्टनरशिप फर्म्स पार्टनरिंग और विद और प्रोवाइडिंग सपोर्ट टू फाइनेंशियल सर्विस बिजनेसेस सो so, जितने भी आपके स्टार्टअप्स हैं बैंक्स हैं फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं एल एल पीज हैं पार्टनरशिप्स फर्म्स हैं जो फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज प्रोडक्ट्स प्रोवाइड करने पर फोकस कर रही है वो सब ही इस सैंडबॉक्स के अंडर लाइव टेस्टिंग के लिए अप्लाई कर सकती हैं दी रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स विल बिगिन द टेस्टिंग प्रोसेस विद अ फ्यू सिलेक्टेड एंटिटीज थ्रू अ कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव सिलेक्शन प्रोसेस एज डिटेल्ड इन द फ्रेमवर्क अंडर फिट एंड प्रॉपर क्राइटीरिया सो ऐसा नहीं है कि जितनी कंपनीज अप्लाई करेंगी सबकी लाइफ टेस्टिंग होगी इट्स नॉट दैट ऑल द कंपनीज विच आर अप्लाइंग विल बी लाइफ टेस्टेड 
few will be selected based on which of those entities are fulfilling the necessary requirements specified by RBI and only those entities are taken forward. अगर 20-30 entities हैं, 20-30 entities हैं जो आती हैं applications लेके अपने product services की उसमें से हो सकता है सिर्फ आठ-दस ही select हो, सब नहीं हो, सारी entities की life testing नहीं की जाती है. Fit and proper criteria will include what? Let's discuss some conditions which might be required to be fulfilled in order to be a successful applicant for live testing of their product and service. So it can be any company incorporated or registered in India or a bank licensed to operate in India or an LLP partnership firm registered in India or a financial institution. So jo company, bank, LLP, financial institution, proper statutes, law ke under registered in India mein, Bohi aage badengi is very framework candor. Then the entity should have a minimum net worth of 10 lakh as per its latest balance sheet. So ye net worth requirement bhi hai. Then all promoters, directors, partners of the entity should be uh, fit and proper. So RBI specifically separately provides a criteria for promoters, directors, partners as well. So these partners, directors and the promoters should fulfill that very criteria. Then the conduct of bank account of the entity as well as its promoters and directors should be satisfactory as per RBI's needs and requirements. Then the credit history of the promoter director should also be satisfactory. Then it should demonstrate that products and services are technologically ready to be deployed in a broader market. Also, these entities need to make sure that they are working on consumer data protection, privacy, building up their IT systems to prevent the uh, unauthorized access of the data, having good IT infrastructure. So, these are the areas in which entity ko work karna hai. Wo properly statute ke under India mein register honi chahiye. Uski kuch minimum net worth honi chahiye. Usko uh, jo bhi unki credit history hai wa ke promoters, directors ki wo satisfactory honi chahiye. Aapko data protection ki taraf work karna hai. Aapka jo bhi product and services hai wo viable enough hona chahiye ki wo ek large market mein deploy ho sake. IT infrastructure develop karna hai. Ye saari kuch requirements hai. Iske alawa bhi or requirements mentioned hai. Alright. Now moving ahead to the update on regulatory sandbox which is regulatory sand related to regulatory sandbox cohorts. So what are these? The, uh, the regulatory sandbox runs a few cohorts. We can say it's basically a group of sandbox processes. Alag alag uh, group of processes jo carried out hote hai is framework under during a live testing of the product is this cohort and our, the RBI makes sure that numerous cohorts are there under this regulatory same uh, framework with regulatory sandbox framework with limited number of entities in each cohort testing their products. So they are thematic cohorts. So her cohort, her group of process is theme pe based. Hai. Each group of process is based on a certain theme. That theme can be financial inclusion or digital KYC or payments and lending and many more. So if suppose a theme is financial inclusion, okay, then different companies can apply for whatever products and services they are coming up with to ensure financial inclusion. If the theme is say digital KYC, then the firms need to apply for different products and services which will facilitate easy digital KYC process. So this is how thematic cohorts are conducted under this framework and usual time period within which this cohort uh, is run and should be completed is 6 months. So jobhi products and services are aaye hain, unki viable testing vagera ho ke final approval 6 mahine ke andar andar ye process pura ho jana chahiye. Now talking about some innovative products, service technologies that can be tested under this regulatory sandbox includes your uh, products and services like retail payments, money transfer service, marketplace lending, digital KYC, financial advisory service, wealth management service, digital identification services, smart contract, financial inclusion product, products, cyber security products. So, these are all types of products ke saath, services ke saath aap aa sakte ho aur unki live testing karwa sakte ho. You can also come up with new technologies like mobile technology applications, data analytics, application program interface services, applications under the blockchain technologies, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So in innovative product services technology ko aap live testing karwa sakte ho and if that proves to be successful then you can launch those products or services in a larger scale. Now talking about the recent cohorts. 
So if I talk about the first cohort, the first cohort for regulatory sandbox was under the theme retail payments. So first cohort ki theme kya thi? Retail payments. So jo bhi companies hain jinke paas aise products ya services hain jo retail payments uh, make sure karenge, wo iske under apply kar sakti thi. So RBI received a total of 32 applications under retail payment cohort. But only six were selected for testing phase and all these six have been found viable and the products have been accepted and these products uh, can further be adopted by regulated entities subject to some regulatory requirements. So 32 applications were received in 32 message six ka selection was the testing phase ke liye aur wo six ki six ne wo testing phase cross kar liya hai aur ab wo apne product or services ko commercialize kar sakti hai. So the names of those six entities which have cleared the first cohort are your nuclear software payment export, TAP smart data information services private limited, natural support consultancy services private limited, NAFA innovations private limited, Obona technologies and in root technologies so their product or service is also mentioned over here to give you an example like if i talk about the nucleus software exports its product is pace what is it it's basically an offline digital cash product so your digital product be here or your offline work karega it proposes to help the digitization of payments in rural areas starting with self-help groups so your rural areas may uh, self-help groups ko specifically help karega digital payments may through an offline payment solution and a digitized centered ecosystem kaise work karega it will use the bluetooth low energy protocol for secure wireless payment where no other connectivity is required so low energy low uh, bluetooth low energy protocol use karke improved technology use karke ye digitized offline payments mein rural areas mein help karega and then similar there are similarly there are other examples as well like city cash is a product of this company INDE cash of natural support and this is the role which they are likely to play moving ahead to the second cohort now so the reserve bank account uh, announced the opening of this very cohort in december 2020 for cross border payments so second cohort ki theme kya thi cross border payments aapko teeno abhi jo main discuss karungi teen cohorts teeno ki themes aapko pata honi chahiye so cross border payments ke under jo bhi companies naye products ya services ke saath aana chahti hai wo second cohort mein apply kar sakti hai so reserve bank received 27 applications uh, out of which 8 have been selected for test phase and that test phase will begin in this very month's third week so second cohort ke liye jo theme hai wo RBI ne December 2020 mein batai thi ki cross border payment hai 27 applications RBI ko mili thi jisme se only 8 entities have been selected for the testing phase inki testing up is month ke third week mein hoengi so uh, names of those 8 entities which have basically passed uh, the selection and are going to be tested in the phase of uh, second cohort include book my forex private limited cash free payments forex solution flyer mint nearby technologies open financial technologies so cash and wall street finance limited so ye wo art firms hain jinki ab products ya services jo hain wo cross border payment theme ke andar test kiye jayenge talking about the third cohort third cohort's theme was also announced in the month of December 2020 and the theme was MSME lending. So third cohort ki theme kya thi? MSME lending. First ki thi retail payment, second ki thi cross border payment and third ki hai MSME lending. So ye theme to ja aapki 2020 mein hi announce ho gai thi lekin application window nahi open hui thi jaha pe entities apply kar sakti hai. So now RBI has that window bhi open. Kar di hai. The Reserve Bank has announced this theme in December 2020. It now announces the opening of the application window. The application window will be open from October 1st to November 14th. So in this time period, ke andar, aap, jo bhi companies can test products and services, ko test karana chahti hai, wo apply. Kar sakti hai. And they have to give a scanned copy of their application, the necessary enclosures, and forward them through an email. So this was all about the three cohorts. Now moving back to question number one. 
which of these is a correct statement first is correct which defines the regulatory sandbox that is the live testing of new product services in a regulatory environment second is also correct which says the objective is to foster responsible innovation in financial service promote efficiency and bring benefit to the customers third is incorrect which says only scheduled commercial banks are target applicants no we just discussed that different startups financial uh, different startups banks llps partnerships all of them are the target applicants so first and second are correct answer is option a moving on to question 2 related to regulatory sandbox the regulatory sandbox may run a few cohorts with a limited number of entities in each cohort testing their products during a stipulated period the regulatory sandbox shall be based on thematic thematic cohorts focusing on financial inclusion payments and lending digital kyc etc identify the theme of second cohort so we know the theme of second cohort is cross border payments answer is option d moving on to question number 3 now The first cohort from for regulatory sandbox was under the theme of retail payments where RBI received 32 applicants and only few were selected for test phase all the pro, 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 products which were selected have been found viable and have exited the first cohort sandbox uh, of this sandbox and the products which have been accepted under this cohort can be adopted by regulated entities How many of these 32 entities are eligible for product adoption after testing? So, अभी हमने discuss किया first cohort में 32 applicants आए थे, six select हुए थे और वो six के six viable proof हुए हैं, so answer is option A, six. Now moving on to last question and next topic of the day. RBI and Dash have announced a project to link their respective fast payment systems, UPI. and pay now to facilitate instant low cost cross border fund transfer the upi pay now linkage will enable the users of each of the two fast payment systems to make pay, to make instant low cost fund transfer on a reciprocal basis without the need to get on boarded onto other system so india along with some other country has entered into a project to link its upi with their upi सो so, इंडिया में जो हमारा फास्ट पेमेंट नेटवर्क है वो है यू ऐसे ही किसी और कंट्री का फास्ट पेमेंट नेटवर्क है पे नाउ बोथ ऑफ दीज हैव बीन लिंक्ड एंड नाउ वी कैन इजीली मेक दी क्रॉस ब्रॉडर पेमेंट्स अमंग इंडिया एंड दैट वेरी कंट्री सो यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दी सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ दैट वेरी कंट्री सो वो कंट्री है सिंगापुर एंड दी मॉनिटरी अथॉरिटी ऑफ सिंगापुर अलॉन्ग विद आर बी आई हैज अनाउंस दिस प्रोजेक्ट सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी वी हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन बट लेट्स गेट इन टू दिटेल्स ऑफ दिस वेरी प्रोजेक्ट सो आर बी आई एंड दी मॉनिटरी अथॉरिटी ऑफ सिंगापुर हैव अनाउंस अ प्रोजेक्ट वेयर दे विल बी लिंकिंग देयर फास्ट पेमेंट सिस्टम विच इज यू पी आई फॉर इंडिया एंड पे नाउ फॉर योर सिंगापुर और राइट दिस विल फैसिलिटेट इंस्टिंग लो कॉस्ट क्रॉस बॉर्डर फंड ट्रांसफर सो लो कॉस्ट पे इजिली हम इन दोनों कंट्रीज के बीच फंड ट्रांसफर कर सकते हैं जैसे कि हम यू पी आई का अपनी ही कंट्री में यूज करके एक पर्सन के अकाउंट से दूसरे पर्सन के अकाउंट में इजिली पैसा डाल सकते हैं विदाउट प्रोवाइडिंग द बैंक डिटेल्स जस्ट थ्रू द वर्चुअल वट एवर एड्रेसेज आर हैव बीन क्रिएटेड और वट एवर फोन नंबर्स वी हैव ऑफ विच आर लिंक टू यू पी आई सिमिलरली नाउ वी कैन डू दैट अमंग इंडिया एंड Singapore the linkage will be operationalized by July 2022 so to July 2022 tak isko operation mein lane ka focus hai and why this very project has been introduced it will enable the users of each of two uh, fast payment systems to make instant low cost fund transfers on a reciprocal basis so india se singapore and singapore se india इस लिंकेज के थ्रू इजीली फंड ट्रांसफर हो जाएगा लो कॉस्ट पे अगर हम पहले बात करते हैं अगर ये यूपीआई ट्रांसफर टाइप का सिस्टम ना हो तो क्या होगा ज्यादा कॉस्ट इनकर करनी पड़ेगी हमें इंटरनेशनल फंड ट्रांसफर्स में अब वो कॉस्ट बचेगी इट्स अ सिग्निफिकेंट माइलस्टोन इन डेवलपिंग द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर क्रॉस बॉर्डर पेमेंट सो इंडिया और सिंगापुर के बीच ही हमारा क्रॉस बॉर्डर पेमेंट्स का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलप करेगा जो जी का फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन का ऑब्जेक्टिव है उसकी तरफ ये एक स्टेप है इट्स अ स्टेप टू वर्ड जी ट्वेंटी फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन ऑब्जेक्टिव विच फोकस ऑन मोर फास्टर चीपर एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट क्रॉस बॉर्डर पेमेंट सो एज ऑफ नाउ इट हैज बीन फॉर इंडिया एंड सिंगापुर वी माइट सून इन नियर फ्यूचर सी सच काइंड ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट 
such linkage projects with other countries as well so the objective is to bring more interoperability of cross border payments uh, between india and singapore and if that happens then obviously it will bring a boost to the trade travel and remittance flows between two countries agar easily fund transfer ho sakta hai do countries ke beech to unke beech ka trade travel remittance flows sab improve honge okay telling a bit more about what's upi and what's pay now so upi we know is a fast payment system in india we are using a virtual payment address created by customer we can easily send or receive back the money without sharing the bank details so it can be a person to person or person to merchant payments okay similarly pay now is a fast payment system of singapore so it enables peer to peer fund transfer uh, available to retail customers and then it enables to send and receive instant funds from one bank or e wallet to the other by just using your mobile number or the virtual payment address like the upi does in india all right so this was the entire concept and with this um we end up this session i hope the session was useful for you and you are clear with this very concept of regulatory sandbox with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much